Hello and welcome to game three between DKH Rain spawning as the red undead in the bottom side of the map versus RVS spawning as the uh, dark green elf for the third time in the top part of the map. This is game three and this is the final game as this is a best of three. So whoever wins this takes home the bacon. Uh, for what? I have no idea. I, I really don't know. I think it's like LBC is the initials. I, I don't know. I tried to find some information on it and I couldn't. I probably should have just asked one of the players, but um, that takes time and no, <laughs> no I just I just uh, honestly I don't know I, that's actually I didn't really think to do that until just now so now it's too late but uh, anyway here we see that uh, we have some goals this time from the undead player rain and over here we have what appears probably gonna be a yes indeed a AOW creep over here and the demon hunter as well as the archers so we have the uh, the observers that are very distracting and I always mean to turn off chat but I kind of forget uh, just being very distracting they are very distracting people not a huge deal in the early bit of the game of course because uh, eh, it's the early bit of the game I don't really have anything important to say right now I would talk more about the player histories but I don't really know all that much about RVS and I've already talked about them really the big thing with rain that I really remember that stands out the recent thing of course the GoTac finals pretty big deal I think that's pretty awesome um, eh, but whatever so here we do see that uh, we have the, the AOW creep going off right here. Pretty standard. It's a pretty standard opening. And there is a Gloves of Face being picked up. He's going to finish off this and then maybe probably come and harass. Now, you do actually see... Oh, I didn't notice this. This is actually a build where you actually tech before you uh, you get your DK out. That's very nice. And you have five goals before one can uh, get wood and four can go creep. That's actually pretty cool. I want to... That's actually very cool. I... 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 I used. Oh, I don't track. know. I don't remember what this is. This build is. There's. I would tell you. It's essentially what you just see here. Obviously, it's, it's what you just see here. But there's an order you do it in to do that. And I don't quite remember it. But uh, that's cool. It's funny how much you forget just not playing the game for you know a year or so. But uh, uh, anyway, um, I, there's actually a, a several builds that you can do this with. But uh, looks like he's going to be going into a graveyard, and that means we're going to be seeing some fiends. And of course, really. Fiends and ghouls are really what you want to do these days against stealth. Uh, of course, a long time ago, we used to see the ghoul guard strategies that Mad Frog, I believe, invented. And I say invented, I don't know if he did or not. I know he popularized the guards. Just uh, definitely did. But um, we will see definitely the fiends. That's kind of standard now. So, what once was standard is no longer standard because Panda is a big old bee. He really is. He just. Oof. Panda just kind of eats your guards, and it's not. it's not nice. It's just not nice. But uh, at any rate, at any rate, we will see just a bit of stuff going around on the map. Some creeping going off, some creep pulling going off, or, I guess. Skeletons dying? I mean, skeletons always die. That's just what they do. But uh, it's newsworthy today, guys. It's newsworthy. So we have a demon hunter running around the map doing nothing. Just running around the map. That's what he's doing. He might be looking to scout. Uh, yeah, I guess he's try trying to find the ended army, but... Not gonna find him over there, just doing nothing. Nothing useful. I have a ghoul running back to the base. He, uh, Rain does not want to lose a ghoul. That's very low HP like that, so he runs him back. Good idea, of course. Demon Hunter is gonna go over here with some archers. Creep out some of the experience camp. Now we can see this is very likely to happen. Rain will probably creep out this bottom of this fountain. You don't have to worry about that red drake too much because of the fact that it's a fountain of health. And you get a nice item from it, so... It's, it's really, it's not bad, I and mean, it's pretty easy to creep it with some ghouls, but uh, here you can see, uh, one ghoul taking some damage, he's going to have to turn around and attack something, uh, or we'll see a purge that also works to switch the focus from that red drake to something else. Skeletons are always good to attack because they're meant to die, that's, that's essentially what we want to see happen. And over here we have the demon hunter, just keep on creeping. Halfway through level 2, a little bit over halfway through level 2, pretty much matching experience for these heroes. We have a circlet of nobility as well as a ring of protection picked up on this death knight. Makes him a little bit tanky uh, against melee damage. And of course, there's a lot of melee damage coming out from this demon hunter if he right clicks on that death knight. Now, is it a big deal? Probably not. It's not as bad as. Whew, it's not as bad as, say, like the Blade Master, who just does ridiculous amounts of damage, phys physical damage. But uh, the, de the demon hunter does do a lot. So, you can see him going ahead and AOW creeping out the rest of this creep camp right here. The rest of this map, I was going to say, there's a lot. Uh, the, this creep camp right here. And you have a skeleton warrior up here doing a little bit of harass on a wisp. Will he get the wisp? I don't know. We'll find out. 
Epic showdown. Epic showdown. They both die. That's that's essentially. <laughs> it wasn't a just. It wasn't a detonate. It was just they both die. So. <laughs> that's nice. I like that. Okay, so that was a nice little perfect ending to that little miniature story. Yes, that's what it was. It was a miniature story. This t the tale of the skeleton and the two wisps. We only saw one wisp because we missed the first half of the movie. That's that's life. You can probably hear an ambulance right now in the background if you're paying close attention. Uh, I can. It's very loud. There's nothing I can do about that. But anyway, we do have... Hopefully it doesn't bother you because that means they're saving someone's life. And if you're bothered by that, then shame on you. Now... And here we can see there is a death knight actually creeping a death knight. There's a demon hunter running away from this creep camp right here with the panda coming ahead and picking up wand of mana stealing, which is a really nice item to have. It allows you to steal some mana. It might get sold, but it might not. Or we can see an archer taking some damage here from this level two death knight about to level three, uh, and it's definitely gonna be able to kill this archer because it did not hide. And even there's no dust on the the, the, demon, the death knight right here. I'm not sure why he didn't hide, but another archer goes down. They should have hided. They should have they should have hid. They should have shadow melted. Melted. Whatever. But I give level 3 to the, to, the, to the Death Knight. Yeah. And so that's good for him. Getting level 3 killing some archers is definitely what you want to be doing with your day as a Death Knight. It's just what you do. It looks like Rain has some lag. And uh, it's doing just fine though. He's going to be able to creep this out the rest of this if he wants to. He's got plenty of skeletons right here and the, the elf did back off. So the elf is going to look like maybe he's going to come back in. We have even more skeletons up. That's a lot of skeletons up. Uh, gets the last hit on the... Not the... Rain got the last hit on the ogre right there, so no problem. Uh, and it looks like it's time for day, so he's going to go ahead and buy that potion of lesser invulnerability before the death knight can, or before the demon hunter can, and the demon hunter does actually get the last hit on that little troll right there, so he get the, got the experience, and it looks like they're very close in experience. 593 versus 592. Rain at a 1 experience disadvantage, however, he is tier 3 versus uh, tier 3, what do you know? And there is a panda somewhere, yes indeed, who is level 2, almost halfway through it, and the lich is only level 1. So, uh, what's going to be best? We can see some nukes are going to happen right here, yes indeed, a coil nova going off on this guy, and he's going to be attacked by him, or we're going to force a TP, most likely. It's going to be very close if he doesn't TP. Uh, getting taken some damage, yes indeed, he's going to TP out just before those fiends hit, as well as the death knight hits him. So, would that have killed him? Uh, probably. He did have a little bit of armor right there, because... Uh, Reduction from the orb of corruption, which is a rhyming. That's right. It's a rhyme scheme. Corruption and reduction. It's not the best, but uh, it, it's a it's a rhyme scheme. That's what it is. So we can see a Naga being picked up third. Kind of a good hero to have. And there are five goals down here. Five now. Do they have frenzy? Let's look and see. It doesn't look like it just from the way they walk, but yeah, they don't because it says average. If it said fast on their movement speed without unholy aura, then that means they have goal frenzy, and otherwise they don't. So that's that. And you can normally tell just by looking, but it never hurts just to double check. I always double check whatever I can just because I make a lot of mistakes, and I don't like making mistakes that are easily avoidable. So. Although I do it anyway, so that's probably why I'm so neurotic attacked. about checking everything. But anyway, we do have a level 3 panda and a level 3 ghoul. Uh, demon hunter, but we do have a ghoul running over here. Maybe for a scout right there. And he's going to say, uh, it's going to give the information that Rain needed to know. That his opponent is down here creeping this. And he might decide that's a good time to attack maybe the elf's base. Because he's not going to have time to get down there and jack him. But he could go over here and maybe force a TP. That would be pretty good. And but we'll see. He might not decide to do that either. We'll find out what he does. He doesn't have a lot of mana. But forcing a TP here would be pretty good. Um, given that he knows this is going on but down here. But uh, looks like he's instead going to come over here and try to finish off this red drake. Probably with web. I would assume he has web. Uh... No, he doesn't have web. Taking a bit of damage on that destroyer. Not gonna go down, just runs it away from the uh, stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much that. I mean, this is not gonna. Passes the orb over to his death knight so he does a little bit more damage. He can attack with all three heroes, but not a big deal. The big deal actually from that is that he has the rune bracers now. He can pass that over to his Nagasi, which, for example, who uh, he can't actually heal. But we'll take less damage from the mana burn and the breath of fires. So that would be pretty nice. So you can see a death knight or a demon hunter is going to come here. Better get a jack off. We're going to see a lot of damage go off immediately onto that demon hunter. Uh, because he does get Coil Nova and nuked him down and attacked a few times with the cold slow arrow actually pulling him down. Uh, statue taking a lot of damage. Is that statue going to die? Not quite to creeps. It won't at least. And it's going to run back into 41 life. Here we do see there is a destroyer to eat the uh, thing. The, re the rejuvenation as well as a Nova going off onto the, uh, the death knight. Or the demon hunter. I believe that was a Nova. You can see a fiend going down. We have these frenzy these goals i believe they're frenzy goals at this point uh they look a little bit like it and they're gonna go ahead and try to kill this dragon right here and we can see that this is a fiend over here 
taking a nice little burrow. And we have this Lich. He's going to probably get mana burn. I guess he does at 91 mana. So unfortunate to lose that much mana. But uh, if he did get to the Nova, he would definitely have been able to kill that uh, Demon Hunter. Of course, we still only have one stat for the Elf. I'm not sure why. And he's going to force a TP on the, the Elf. It's going to force a TP from Rain. And Rain will, of course, gladly oblige that. Doesn't keep doesn't get the uh, the Burrowed Crypt Fiend right there. And it, mm, is it noticeable to the Elf? I don't think so. He might have just been standing there by coincidence on top of that Fiend. I don't know if he remembers that that was, in fact, even Burrowed. Um... I probably wouldn't. And yeah, so that's that. And we have the demon, the demon hunter coming up, or the death knight coming up here to grab the mantle of intelligence plus three. It's a really nice item. Of course, you need mana as much as you can on any undead hero, and uh, you know, especially this is especially true against mana burn, which is you know a big deal. So over here we have. No, it's only three intelligence, but still, that's not bad. I think well, that is. Are let's see. Attack. That is yes, indeed, forty-five mana. Three intelligence, forty-five mana. That's that's pretty good. That is that is pretty good. That's all you know. That's a little more than half a coil. So, so yeah, I say a little more. Seventy-five mana, seventy-five divided by forty-five. I can't do that. I there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that. I'm not gonna try. Uh, we'll just leave it in fraction form. That's seventy-five over forty-five mana of a coil. Anyway. Uh, we do have the the elf has an expansion right here, which is nice, and that's going to go up here. And he has an AOW helping to protect that. And he's going to creep this, and that makes the map crypt crept out, crypt out, crept out. Except for this little green camp, who is lucky today, just today, right? Anyway. So with the map pretty much being crept out, and a shade on the map, that's good to have. A shade is very good scout. It's a reliable scout. Last game we saw lots of scouts from skeletons. Uh, are we going to see that again this game? No. This game we're going to see... Um, a town is under siege. We're going to see some some shades, which is a very reliable scout, and some frostworms. Frostworms, pretty good against bears, because you can kill bears with frostworms. It's pretty good for hero focus. The only downside to frostworms, of course, is going to be the dryads, and dryads are not a huge issue. So, don't worry about that. Yep, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Because there's only like five of them, and they don't have upgrades, but is the elf getting upgrades? It's likely. Let's see. Not yet. Not yet. He is at 63 out of 73. Over here. Uh, uh. A player's force is Ooh, under ah. attack. It's yawning there. But, um... We have Rain, who is at 49 out of 60 food, making a Frostworm that's going to put him up to 56 out of 60. You could make maybe uh, a statue or a fiend right here if he wants to, but he doesn't have enough resources for that. He's at 149 gold. Needs at least, like, 200 and some, so... 215, 235, depends on what he wants to make. And, ooh. Aba. Scouting around, seeing, just checking the other spots for uh, probably wisps right now. And. He's gonna find the only creep spot that did not get camped. Or. What? The only creep camp that did not get. Spotted? I don't know what I was saying right there. He's gonna find the last creep, the remaining bit of creeps on the map. They're still alive. Attack him. Gonna count. We're gonna intercept this right wisp right there. Uh, two wisps, in fact. It looks like someone from his teammate, being very, very teammate and helpful, like and rooting for his team, saying Rain loses hard. What a shameful person. I don't know. I don't know. It's not looking too good for Rain. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. But uh, this isn't nothing to be afraid of, right there. There's some dryads. Good position to kill those. But here comes in the cavalry, the barrier cavalry, in fact. And they're gonna come right in here. Not gonna be easy. But this is actually a pretty superior position for the elf. So Rain is gonna be forced to TP directly out. He's not even gonna be able to really fight that at all. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he might have killed a bear. I'm not sure. That's better than I thought he would do, but uh, I'm not sure. We do see a dryad, of course, coming back over here. Gonna get uh, rejuvenated at some point, probably from this 400 HP or 400 mana bear. Wow. I keep yawning. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I keep yawning, but I am. So uh, over here we see that there's the gold mine being. Being mined by wisps somehow. Uh, here we see another frost worm coming out. Now, honestly, the one thing that's going to be Rain's saving grace here is that he has a bunch of bears to kill, and they're going to go down pretty quickly against two or three frost worms and some focus fire and some nukes. So as long as he doesn't take a bad position to fight, he will definitely be able to do pretty good uh, against this elf army. So we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, you know, if you kill, he could he could easily win one of these fights if he takes it well positioned enough, and then if he wins a fight, he can kill the expo, um, that's definitely true. And he can also force a fight if he needs to by putting up an expo, 
Um, there's options there. We have a druid of the claw just sitting here. He might actually come try to kill this because it's just chilling out there. And he has that wisp on it, or the shade on it. Now, we do see, in fact, a frost worm as well as a meat wagon, actually. So that was a good ping. I didn't notice the meat wagon before. Uh, the meat wagon will be helpful to deal with the dryads. So that's actually going to be really good. And that's actually really smart because whenever you have dryads um, they, they and you have frost worms, usually the dryads right-click the frost worms. And then you can pretty much guarantee that you know exactly where the dryads are going to go. And they're going to probably move fairly much in a straight line like this and block themselves, which means a meat wagon, if you target the right ones in the middle, you'll splash a lot of damage and do a whole lot of pain to these dryads, especially if they don't have any armor, because they are unarmored and they take a lot of damage from these bad boys. So as you can see, just uh, they take extra damage from siege attacks. This is a siege attack, it's pretty high damage. As you can see, that dropped it down to 299 life from 450, 435. Anyway, here we can see this is a fight. This is a pretty good position for uh, Rain right here is going to immediately have to stop that panda out. And who is going to have to TP? Yes, it's going to be RVS TPing away. Yeah, and there is an AFK Frost Room down there. It's probably going to get moved into position at some point by Rain, hopefully fairly soon. And over here we can have the statues. Now, yes, here comes that, uh, the, uh, the, what's Town it called? Is under siege. The, uh, Frost Room. And here comes another meat wagon coming out. And he's probably going to just, you know, he knows right now he's got a good shade scout. So he knows that his opponent only has one expansion. But that's one more than he does, so he might decide this is the time to put up an expansion. Maybe as well as go ahead and try to, to force a fight here. But again, he doesn't want to take a bad position fight. Now we have quite a few more Dryads on the map at this point. They are 1-1 at this point. Uh, yes, indeed, they're not going to get any more attack upgrades or damage upgrades. Or attack or, <laughs> or attack or armor upgrades, but we do have another Meat Wagon coming out. Now it's a good idea to wait and force your opponent to attack you if you can. We might be seeing that happen right here, but... Uh, there's really nothing forcing RVS to attack right now. I, I don't know why he would attack right now. So if he does attack, I'll be a little bit shocked. Uh, it looks like he's going to kill an archer. It's not a bad idea. You know, he, he for for him to attack, I think that would be out of out of place because he's at 79 out of 90 food. He can go up to 100 food. He can get more with hippogriffs, for example. He can get better upgrades on his units. Um, he has an expansion. His opponent doesn't. He knows this. So there's really no reason for him to attack right now. And we can see that there's rain right here. Essentially, just chilling out and waiting, and now that's not a bad idea either to just chill out and wait. But uh, that's Nuckards, Nuckids, Nuckad, Nuckid. I don't know how to say his name, and 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 given his prediction for what's going to happen in 80 vs 80 army, where Rain will win the fight, but the Expo will win the game. So, will that happen? Eh, who knows? I'm not going to say that I think that's necessarily what's going to happen. This is actually shaping up to be a really good army against this elf army. He's actually going to be able to pretty much decimate it, I think, um, depending on the depending on the attack timings. Because if he waits too long, then mm, it's not going to work. But if he, because essentially what will happen is, yeah, we can see these upgrades are coming in. Puts these guys up to 1-1 one, one going on to 2-1. And if that the happens, yeah, that's bad. Here attack. we can see a... Forcing a TP is going to kill a bear in the meantime. It's going to try. It's going to go, nope, down to 12 HP, but not dead. So that's good. And that's basically what uh, Rain needed to do. Now, you can throw up a counter expansion at this point if you'd like. Uh, let's see. That's the goal, just getting a scout off. He's got to have those scouts information. It's very important. It allows you to make informed decisions. And if you're not making informed decisions, you're only guessing, and you could be wrong. And if you're wrong, even just 10% of the time, that means you're going to lose 10% of your games uh, if it's a game-winning kind of decision. So you don't want that. You always have to scout. It's very important. And even though you have a shade, it's not always enough. Sometimes you need to know more information than just where is a uh, where is his army. I need to also know if he's got expansion, so you got those things. So, uh, someone was lagging, it looks like. We saw a miniature lag screen there, not a huge issue. And, of course, Rain's saying, hey, don't do that. Um, playing a game here, and this is intense. This is game three, so whoever wins this game takes home all the bacon for whatever the hell they're playing. I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm just going to assume it's a million-dollar prize pool, because, frankly, that makes it even better, right? So... For the million dollars, who's going to win this fight? It's RVS or Rain. If this fight goes in Rain's favor, he will be able to secure this expansion and perhaps even take out the opponent's expansion and win the game. However, if the elf RVS is able to kill these units right here, then he will definitely be able to uh, kill the Gundead expansion and win the game as well. That's for a million dollars, folks. A million dollars. Now, this is real money. It's not imaginary money. It's actually imaginary money. Don't worry about it. Anyway, we can see the fight has started. and We can see uh, Meat Wagons in the back of the map trying to... Essentially trying to take out these dryads right there. Well, very nice positioning, very nice positioning on these dryads, running into the fight, attacking the frost worms, forcing them out, not a, not wanting them to be having free reign on these bears right here. We can see this death knight taking a ton of damage. He's going to go ahead and use a 15 second invulnerability potion. Uh, 
And we do have, the, of course, one of the wagons goes down, but we have these dryads also taking a lot of damage right here as well. If all the dryads die, that's not going to be good for uh, RVS at all. But uh, he does still have plenty of bears up, four bears up, and they're going to not really be all that effective while they're slow and running around and not able to really do anything. You see, they're not even attacking right now. That's not good for them. They need to be attacking. They're going to start to attack the Abomination. They're really slowed by everything they're doing. They're attacking the A-Bomb with Frost Armor slows them down. Being attacked by these Frost Armor slows them down. Nova slows them down. It looks like we're going to see a TP being forced from the two, uh, from RVS. Okay. And it looks like Rain is in a pretty good position at this point. He does, in fact, secure this expansion. And the just pretty much obliterated a lot of the army from the RVS player over here down to 63 food versus 67 rain clearly won that fight is he actually gonna go ahead and go for the expansion killing blow I don't think so that's not a good idea he's gonna go ahead and use this healing fountain and have his mana, uh, statue set to mana so they can start regenerating um, of course as well as health but essentially just getting everything back up to full so he can really take that fight again uh, before this elf comes down there to try to attack this expansion yet again you have a meat wagon stored up here just you know and why not it's a good place to have it and if you have it running around the map it's in a much more likely position to die now over here we can see this aqua is going to go ahead and repair it and we do see that the elf is trying to come over here and of course rain is well aware of this and he's going to move back into position running into the back and this really gets to pick his position here do we have any more frost worms almost out yes indeed it's going to be out very soon and once that comes out it's going to be really map control completely over to paint rain because rain with a frost worm isn't going to be afraid of just a handful of dryads especially if there's only a couple of bears in the map he's going to have the nuking power to simply knock everything down uh kind of the big bad wolf at this position he is going to puff puff and blow this elf right over I think uh, but we'll have to wait and see that's just my prediction we do have that frost worm coming out and here we're gonna see these, these uh, this the meat wagon taking some damage but it's being repaired by this aqua not a huge issue you can see this, this as you can see so much damage from the uh, the frost rooms when they hit a bear uh, just it's really excessive they take extra damage from magic attacks and of course uh, frost worms do do quite a bit of damage 85 to 105 damage to um, to these units right over here so you can see that's just massive 200 damage or so done to these bears every attack now it depends on the amount of armor and what form they're in uh, but essentially yeah they, they both forms take extra damage from magic attack so you can see uh, it, it hurts it does hurt you know these these are this this meat wagon being used really effectively really just forcing RVS back and just back and back and back at this point uh, doing whatever he can really to buy for position here and you can see he's getting a pretty good position to be able to fight and attack these uh these dryads while these bears are doing nothing over here at just AFK and we see a lot of damage going off onto that panda the panda, panda being forced to run away you can see the frost worm is taking a ton of damage as well from these dryads uh, and forcing a death or death rain to TP out at this point really once those bears moved into position it wasn't nearly as good as it was a second before that but um that's indeed what happened and now we're gonna see the elf back off I'm not really sure why he backed off right there I guess he knows he knew that there would be no way he would win the fight coming down here but uh, ah, never mind I see because he has another expansion coming up of course it all makes sense now he knows that he needs to stall and delay the game to have any chance and he wasn't really gonna wanting to take a all-or-nothing fight down here at the expansion which is what it would have probably been if he had come down so yeah there's that and up here we have RVS indeed we do have RVS and he's just kind of chilling uh, just kind of regenerating recuperating and he's gonna need a lot of units here um, I, and he just doesn't have them I, this isn't really looking very good for RVS but uh, it's looking great for rain really uh, the death knight taking a ton of damage right off, I'm sorry the demon hunter taking a ton of damage down to 37 life before it impotions uses a potion of invernability he kind of ran up there by himself that's something we've seen RVS do so many times in the series well he'll just run a death knight or a demon hunter and the demon hunter actually goes down to a long range coil right across the screen as he was running away very nicely done by rain I think that might very well be the killing blow for the million dollars that doesn't actually exist and as you can see this is gonna be as oh, that would be too funny if the demon hunter died again from a frost armor uh, from the frost armor and it looks like yes indeed it's gonna go down no way to keep it alive there is no staff on this panda uh, he's not going to deliver the killing blow for some reason I'm not sure why there it goes there it goes and the rest of the night off army is really gonna be easy picking it's at this point those bears don't stand a chance you can't really get away from frost armor or, I'm sorry from the frost slow that you have from those frost worms the slow from the frost worm yes indeed because it lasts so very long and they can easily just keep attacking you now this time we just see him switching over your targets to try to kill his panda and in fact there you go uh, Jesus is the GG's uh, the GG's uh, is I don't even know it's called by RVS and that is game over so game number three going to rain so that means he wins uh, Darn, I, I shouldn't have said that. I was trying not to spoil. Hopefully you watch this sequentially. That does mean he indeed wins the series. So for whatever reason, I don't really know what it is. But anyway, um, I guess it's true. Yeah, it's game three. You already know, right? 
Yeah, you already know. If it's game three, then you know. So if you're watching this and you just got spilled, it's your own darn fart. Darn, 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 darn words. It's your... Whatever, anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's me done for this series. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. So I hope you enjoyed the game.